Hi, welcome into the studio. My name is Jason Morgan. I'm an artist and I thought I'd do another quick video on pastels aimed specifically for people who want to start and they're confused. I remember a couple of years ago it is now when I was starting in pastels. Um, I found it very confusing at the beginning to find what supplies I needed and the more I looked into pastels themselves and what people were creating and what I wanted to create similar to them the more confused I got because they seem to have tons and tons of supplies all different so now I'm a couple of years on I'm looking back if you want to do pastels in the style that I'm doing pastels because I do a lot of realism this is what I use if you want to do things that are more abstract or much more loose in style you may want to look at um, seeing what different artists do so let's start off with the absolute basics the basics pastel pencils that's really all you need to buy uh, to make a start you really don't need anything more than that and these are Faber Castell as you can see pit pastel pencils 60 in this tin and if I open them up we can see lots and lots of uh, different colors in there to choose from there's a double row there so pit pastels that's a great set of pencils now these ones are on the harder side of pencils with pastels they come in um, when you try different brands you find some are much softer than others the harder brands uh, like Pitt Pastels and Carbothellos are the ones that I use and I find most suited to wild, wildlife. Um, so they are the ones I use most often. They are my two favourites. So that's Carbothello and the Pitt Pastels. And just out of interest, this is what a Carbothello looks like. So you can see the pits have got the, the wooden shaft. The Carbothello has got the coloured shafts on them. So it's personal preference which one you want and they come in similar size sets and in the UK at least they're similar um, prices too. Now you can create art just with the pencils. You really don't need anything else if you're working um, fairly small. Now I've got videos out there that I've got specifically showing them just pencils being used so people can start off uh, fairly small with the subjects they're doing and uh, follow along in the two videos I've got and I, I actually say the um, types of or the, the numbers of the colors so you haven't got to spend much to start off. When I was starting I got really confused I wanted to do these dramatic scenes and everybody seemed to be using lots and lots of pastels. So my advice for starters get a set of or even just the colors that I, that I say I think I've got on my one demo is around about just 16 pencils. You could just go out and buy those 16 colors and buy a sheet of pastel matte paper. That's my preferred type. And just do that demo. And then you can tell whether you're going to like pastels or not in a very inexpensive way. So it really allows you to try it out on those tutorials. If you love it, as I did, you can then go ahead and buy you know a set because the sets are much cheaper it's a much cheaper way to buy it in a set rather than individually so that's where you get your cost savings and if you're going to um, continue doing pastels I guarantee you want a full set so that's what I would then purchase now if you want to continue um, only doing small work so I, I'm saying around about the A4 size uh, work and you don't really envisage going much much larger than that you could stick with just the pencils and you may end up with the set of Faber Castells you may put the Carbothellos in there as well because they're all very or slightly different in colors and you could try some really vibrant colors if you wanted to increase your set uh, a company called Geoconda they got a great set of real vibrant colors they're a bit softer but if you want to continue um, on a fairly small scale then what you'll find is the pencils are great but you know if you're doing a, a, a fairly um, singular colour background say you've got a, a dog's head for instance and you've got a completely blue or completely green background 
the pencils weigh down very quickly because obviously the actual um, lead going through there or the colour going through there, the pastel, there's not much in there. So they wear out or wear down quite quickly and it's not very cost effective if you're blocking in large areas. So then you may want something like these. These are called a hard pastel. They're a hard pastel stick. Now, once again, they're by Faber-Castell and there's a couple of different makes out there, but these are like, because this, they're hard, but you can still use them for blending the background. Some of the sticks I, I found out um, fairly recently, like Conti, that I used at the beginning when I was trying out pastels, they're great for things like underlaying fur, and I, I've got a, a video showing using that technique. But when you want to blend a background and make it really soft, they're too hard. Now these Faber-Castell ones, they're soft enough to blend well. And you can also sharpen them up on the edges. You can uh, sharpen them to a point with some sandpaper. And you can use them for details, just like a pencil as well. So they would be a nice addition if you're going to work small or larger but especially if you're going to work a small, and that may, may be all you want to ever purchase, to be honest. These are not expensive, at least not in the UK. There's different brands of those out as well. So for beginners, let's not get confused yet. You can use just the pencils, use them for underlaying, put your details on top. If you're working um, a bit larger, you may, or, or you want to, save your pencils a bit more you may want to get a set of these as well to go with them and they're great then for backgrounds in particular okay so that's still all quite simple so why do people then use what we would call soft pastels these pastels that are in kind of a, a conical or a, a um, tube shape why do we use those well as the name suggests, they are softer. So that means if you're blocking in areas, let's say for instance, a background, they're soft and they blend very easily. Now I've got other videos again showing the potential downfall of some of these because when they're soft, it means they can fill the tooth of the paper up quite easily if you're not being careful. And then that means it's more difficult, if not impossible sometimes to get details on top with your pencils. Now, some artists just use these, especially then when they work in large. You usually find those artists work really large and they can use the edges of these for details. Um, you've got loads and loads of colours and some of them are much softer than others. Now, brands such as Unison, it's quite popular, expensive as well. They're very soft. Now, personally, with my style, I've only got a few of these and I don't really buy many of these at all. I've, I personally find them too soft. And I really prefer these um, Jackson's brand uh, pastels. They're that bit harder. They're really punchy in colour, just like the Unison, but they're a bit harder so the pastel stays where I put it on the pastel matte paper a lot more. And because they're that bit harder, they don't uh, have the um, habit of really filling the two for the paper up so easily. So, so those are the ones I like. So for instance, now then, let's say you're a beginner, do you need to buy these? If you're working small, no, you can just use the pencils. It really is as simple as that. Pastel art is as simple as that. It doesn't need to be complicated. So when would you want to start purchasing these perhaps? Well, if you're working larger, you'll find that the blocking in stages, you're not really using your pencils because they'll wear down quickly. Remember I said they haven't got that much pastel in the center of them. You look, for instance, at the amount of pastel that's in that pencil, and you compare it then with the amount of pastel that's in the stick. So you can see there's a lot more pastel in this. It's actually a bit more cost effective usually to do it that way. So that's why I would then purchase these as well. I use them um, very lightly and sparingly on underlayers, blocking in the actual uh, underlayer. Because in pastels, we work in layers just like with oils 
I put an under layer, then I start adding details on top. But there are other types of pastels as well, so this is where it gets confusing. These are called pan pastels, and they're actually a set that, um, of colours I put together with pan pastel um, specifically that I liked for wildlife painting, for people starting off. And you can see I've got some good colours in there for underlayers. I've got some uh, colours in which are suitable for wild wildlife subjects we do a lot of, which would be kind of like owls and tigers and lions. And then I've got a blue in there and a green for our usual types of backgrounds and a black and a white to tone them. So when would you use pastels, uh, pan pastels, if at all. Well, I've been experimenting with these for probably the two years or so more uh, now, and I love these for underlayers. So for doing that blocking in, and I find nothing easier to use than these pan pastels, which come in these little cake tubs, and you apply them with uh, small soft tools, they're called. You can get different heads on there, or you can use the small uh, sponges or we've got larger sponges and they're just really easy to block in. It almost feels like painting or sculpting with uh, pastel and it, it all comes together very quickly and once again I've got lots of videos showing the techniques with these. So if you don't want to use the um, sticks, you know those large uh, kind of Jackson sticks, Jackson Art Supply sticks that I was showing, you can use these instead or as well as. All pastels can be intermixed. So, you know, you could buy a set or uh, one or two of these even and just try it out. Watch my videos and see how I use them. You see, there's lots of different ways with pastel you can get a similar or the same effect. And some people like using pans, so that's pretty much a compressed uh, pastel stick. It's a little bit more scientific than that, but if you think of them as compressed pastel sticks, and there's quite a lot of intense pastel in there, um, some people love using these, some just like the pencils, some just like the sticks and go, you know, a larger scale. These last quite a long time as well. So there's, that's where the confusion comes in, um, when there's lots of different ways of doing the same thing. But you don't have to be confused. If you're thinking about starting, um, personally, all I would do is just buy a few pencils. I do one of my demos, um, I do a few pencils or buy a few pencils. Say you wanted to do a, a small flower to start, look at the colors of the flower, perhaps make a little color chart of what you need. Go out and buy your six, seven, 10, 15 pencils for the colors. Buy some pastel matte paper. You know, I, I love pastel matte paper. It allows me to do the layers. Don't um, shortcut yourself by buying paper that's, that's going to be rubbish for you and not going to work. I did that years ago and it put me off pastels for something like 10 years. Get a sheet of good paper. And as I said, I prefer pastel mats. What I've used from day one. Get that and... Um, do that little flower drawing, painting, pastel, whatever you want to call it. Do that and see if you like it. If you do and you want to stay small, uh, A4, A4, perhaps a bit bigger, just use the pencils. If you want to keep it simple, just use the pencils. It doesn't have to be complicated. If you want to go large and you've seen some of my other videos and you've seen me blocking in with pastel sticks or pan pastels and I show all different ways of doing it in my videos so you can then choose which you want because you can get all these supplies from lots of art art supplies like I say I use uh, Jackson's just because um, they deliver really fast the packaging is perfect always on there and that's who I stick with so that's where I, I send people and I'll put some links down below this video to these materials um, that you could buy from Jackson's. It's an affiliate link, so I get a few pennies if you purchase through that. And they ship internationally. A lot of my Patreon art channel members use them for uh, Canada and USA as well. So, just pencils, or you can start adding pans in if you want to go larger. It's just a decision. It, it sounds complicated, but it's not. It really isn't. To just start out, get your feet wet in it, I just get some pencils. So I hope that's cleared things up a little bit for you. 
as I said I've got a, a Patreon art channel and there's lots and lots of videos hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of videos on there showing the basics of pastels all the way up to super advanced so i hope to see you there and i'll see you all again real soon on the next video if you're looking for even more great art sources i've really got you covered first off i've got a patreon channel it's been going well over a year or so packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month lots of the videos are uh, many hours long so you can see they're really really in-depth subjects such as um, turtles birds elephants big cats you name it is on there so that's my patreon channel and also on that patreon channel before i go into something else i've got a secret facebook group so only the members are actually on there it's the most supportive and friendly facebook group that i've ever seen i know i'm biased but it really is We've got uh, four or five hundred members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also, you get line art every month as well. And we've just designed a brand new companion website for it. So if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very, very difficult to navigate around, we've got this free website that comes with it. All the videos are now just a single click away. Couldn't be any easier than it is. I've also got my site, jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of tutorial videos, DVD discs and downloads on there. And if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever so hope you like those extra resources and i'll see you all again real soon